All right guys, how you doing? In this video, I'm gonna show you what gear I use to make all these YouTube videos. I'm gonna put a link to all this stuff in the description, guys, so if you're wondering where to get any of that stuff from, just have a look down below. So I'm gonna start off with by showing you my YouTube room. I've only just finished building this. I've still got a few little bits and bobs to do, but I'll put a link in the description below, guys, so you can see those videos of converting this space. So this is my RC car bench. So I've got most of my RC cars up here on the shelves. Got my tools here, my bench here, a couple more X-Maxes up there. And my other channel, Kev's Hacks, is what this area here is all about. And then also I've got this counter here, which is on wheels. So if I'm doing an unboxing, I can wheel that over there and just sort of kind of put it wherever I want to put it. So I'm going to start off with my camera gear. The one that I'm filming on now is a 70D from Canon. And that's the... My, probably my most go-to camera when I'm in the in the um, studio here. If I'm out and about, I don't normally take this. It's a bit big, it's a bit bulky, and I normally use my phone. This is just a Samsung Galaxy S7, and that's what I use for most of my videos when I'm driving the RC cars. Because, here's one of my controllers, guys. It's got one of these finger me jigs on here. Hold on, I'll just put you down for a sec. And then I can put my phone in there like that. And then, I could do my RC in like that and film at the same time. And it's really, really easy with this phone. So all you gotta do, you just double click on that power button and that's it, you're recording. You just hit record and there we go, we're filming now. And the quality of this phone, guys, is actually not bad at all. It records in 4K, it's fairly smooth. I mean, it's not the best in the world, but for when I'm doing RC videos, it's perfect. And the audio on this thing isn't too bad, actually, guys. I mean, sometimes if I'm using it to record in the studio, because a lot of the times if I'm wrenching on something, let's just get something. So saying that I'm wrenching on this, and I've got this big camera in the way here like this, it all sort of kind of gets in the way. Whilst if I'm doing it with a cell phone, it's a lot smaller. I could just kind of put that there. It's a lot easier to work around it, and the quality is not that bad. And for the audio, I plug this guy on there sometimes. And that just plugs, let me just put you down for a sec. That just plugs right in there like that. And now we get some fairly good audio. So let me put that on there quickly guys and then you can hear. All right guys, so that's the audio out of this road little clip on smartphone mic. Not too bad. So the other camera that I use quite often, especially if I just want to chuck it at someone and not worry about it getting broken too much, is this little Sony here. It's quite cheap, quality is not Brilliant, brilliant, but it will do. And then over here, I've got my Mavic Pro drone. Here's one of the tripods that I use. This one's only a cheapo, but it's got a fluid head on it. What that means, I can do some of these smooth panning shots. And I will equip all my um, cameras and all my tripods and all my lights with these quick release plates here. Because what that means, I can just stick anything on there what I like. So for example, I've got a video light here. And I can just clip that straight on there and do it up. And then I've got this other tripod here, which is kind of a homemade contraption. It's a selfie stick that I've mounted onto one of these Monfoto tripod-y type thingy jigs. And then I've bodged a pivot ball on the top and another one of these plates. So what that means, I can put anything up there what I like. I can put a video light up there and clamp that on. So if I quickly just need a lamp somewhere, I can just quickly move that. And it's a lot easier to set this thing up than it is this tripod. I mean, if I want to change the height on this, I've got to mess about unscrewing the legs and moving it all up and down and everything. Whilst on this thing, it's just a matter of twisting this. I can drop it down to any height that I want. And then it's easy to kind of move the whole lot back up again like that. So it's quite versatile. I mean, I can't put the big camera on there, but I can put my smartphone on there. So if I'm wrenching on my RC cars, for example, that's just perfect just to stick that there. I can stick the smartphone on top and I can quickly just move that to any angle that I want really quickly. And that's why if you've noticed guys, when I'm working on these things, you see me do so many different angles. Sometimes I'll do a shot coming from here and then it will cut and do a shot coming from this side. And then you might get a shot from up here. And that's all possible because I'll do it with this. And it's so quick just to sort of start off there, then start off here and maybe move it up. And yeah, it just works out really well guys. For lighting guys, I need to get more lighting sorted out in this room. I want to get an electrician in here and I want to just cover this whole ceiling with a lot more video lights 
So when I come in in here and want to start filming, all I've got to do is just flick a switch on the wall and all my lights will be on. But I use these light boxes quite a lot of the time and they do come on a stand like this. I mean, these are really cheap. I got these off of Amazon. I'll put a link to them down below. And you can just pretty much just move them where you want and put them on. I've screwed a couple up to the ceiling here. And that was actually when I was doing my Kev's hacks on this bench here. But I've moved it all now, so I'm going to have to move these probably over there. Uh, the other light that I've used, you've seen just a minute ago. And that's these battery powered things. These are just cheap. Battery on the back. Ah, and while we're over here, this is my little charging station that I've made. Hold on, the lighting does suck a bit in this video, guys, because I'm moving about so much, you know, I just can't be bothered to keep setting up the lamp everywhere in all the different areas. So, bear with me, guys, but, you know, the idea is just to show you guys what I use. It's not really supposed to be a, a good-looking video. So this over here, guys, is my charging rig. And the idea behind this thing is, is that I can keep all my charging gear all together, all in one place, all in one board. And I can move this thing anywhere I like. I used to have it hanging up on the wall. I mean, since I've remodeled everything in here, I've got to change it. And I'm probably going to take one of these shelves down and just hang it up up there. And, I've, and I've, these shelves here is going to build my camera gear. I've still got to sort that out yet, guys. But pretty much, I've got my Canon charger. I've got my drone charger. I've got my other little chargers for my um, video lights and my other camera. And I've got enough room on here so I can have some other chargers. And then down here, I've got my flat batteries and my full batteries. So this keeps all my camera gear, all my battery gear, everything like that, all together. And it's just easy to find. Before, it was all just one big mumble jumble of spaghetti cables all piled up there. And I never knew what was what. So this whole area here, guys, is still work in progress. At the moment, it's just an eBay packing bench. But that's going to get all sorted out. It's probably going to be all my camera gear and everything's going to be up here. I used to do all my editing on this Dell laptop. I mean, it's got a 4K screen, it's got loads of gigabollocks. I mean, the specs are right up there for a laptop, but it does struggle a little bit on 4K editing. I mean, if I'm editing at home or something like that, I'll use this guy. And I've got this coupled up to these, my mate calls my Wonder Box. It's actually a Thunderbolt uh, free box. And what that does is you pretty much just plug the laptop in with one cable and that charges it up. It's got all my USB ports on there. You can power two 4K monitors with it. My printer, my keyboard, all my USB ports. It's got all the other connections around the back. I'm not going to pull it out. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. I mean, if you guys are interested in that, I could do a whole other video if you like. But most of you guys probably won't be, so I won't bother. And then I've got the same one of these as well at home. Another one in the office. So all I can do, I can just pick this laptop up, put it anywhere I want. I've got one of these wonder boxes, plug it in, and I've got the whole desktop as it is here. All right, so up here is where most of my editing happens. So down here is the PC. Spec-wise, I'm gonna put a link in the description for that, guys. It's uh, i9, it's got a lot of gigabollocks. Basically, I've got it pretty much built just for editing videos on. And I've got a couple of 4K monitors here, guys. There's a video that I'm working on at the moment. It's just rendering out, it's just done now, actually. And yep, a couple of 4K monitors there. Then I've got these speakers, monitoring speakers. I forgot to make what they are, but link will be in the description for them, guys. If I do any talking on camera up here, I've got this blue spark microphone here. And that's going into this focus right scarlet two eye, something or other it's called. Link down below for that, guys. Then behind the monitors, I've got another tripod here, which I mount the cannon on sometimes. And I've got a lead here that goes directly to the camera. So all I have to do is when I'm filming, I can just hit a button here and I'll turn my USB onto the cam to the computer. And I can straight away dump the footage from this camera directly onto my computer without having to keep pulling in the memory card in and out. Then we got the table and I built this table myself. I couldn't find a table big enough, but this is actually double the size of a standard dining table. It's actually three meters long. It doesn't look it on camera, guys. But this thing is enormous. And I'll tell you what, guys, it's awesome. I mean, it's so good when you're sitting there working. You can really spread out. You can have all your stuff laid out. You can have your cameras, your drones, all your footage, all your notes, everything all laid out in one space. And it just makes working so much easier, guys. Then over here, I've got a, I think it's a 60-inch TV. And I use that sometimes as a little set. I'll set the camera up over here. And I'll sit behind that table and do an unboxing. But, to be honest guys, I don't think it comes out that well. So I've kind of given up doing that. I don't do that very often. So, 
So, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, waste of money. And then over here, you've got a sofa bed, so if I ever get a little bit tired, I can just have a little kip, shut my eyes and chill out. And I'm actually on the verge of, of buying a couple of new cameras, guys. I want to up the quality when I'm out bashing. I don't really want to use the cell phone all the time, because even though it does a brilliant job for what it is, I mean, when you're panning quickly, I don't think it can just dump enough data onto the memory card quick enough. So I think it really needs a dedicated camera to go over go that. I'm not sure what to get yet, guys. And also, I want to upgrade this 70D, because it only does 1080p. I want to do something that goes 4K. And at the moment, it's out of two cameras. It's either out of the Sony A6500, but the problem with that is you can't turn the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. let me show you. So this is a NEX5, I don't use it anymore because it's a bit poorly, but on the Sony A6500, you can't tilt this screen round, it's kind of locked in that position, you can't tilt it. So if you're filming yourself, or you're, you're filming something there and you want, to, you want to see what's going on, you can't. It's all behind the camera, you can't flip it over. So that's the biggest point that puts me off on the Sony camera. Also, it's got really, 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 really bad rolling shutter. What that means is when you're panning quickly like that, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of rolling shutter is, guys. Just type it in, not by me, but other people. And pretty much what that does is you're panning, all your vertical lines are gonna start tilting. So if you're going like this, it's gonna, you know, like lamp posts or fence posts or anything like that, it's all gonna, I think they call it a jello effect or something. And it sucks, guys. It looks awful. And you can actually fix that in Premiere Pro or other editing softwares, but it's a pain in the ass. I don't want to mess about with that. I just want to dump the footage onto my editing software and, and just use it. So I'm not going to go for the Sony simply for that fact. The next camera I was looking at is a Panasonic GH5. I mean, that really ticked all the boxes. It's got the articulating screen. Rolling shutter's not bad. Awesome quality, it does 4K, you can plug in an external mic, but autofocus auto sucks so bad guys. I've seen some videos of it and the autofocus really, really sucks and low light performance isn't all that great neither. But, there's rumours now of a GH5S, which is apparently supposed to make the low light capabilities a lot better and also it's supposed to fix that autofocus problem. So when that comes out, guys, I'm probably gonna buy that camera, unless Sony come out with something better, who knows. But expect soon, guys, for the quality of all these videos to get a lot better. So the editing software that I use is Premiere Pro, or Premiere Pro, you Americans say. It's, it's quite expensive, I think it's about 50 pound a month, I think I'm paying, but you get a lot of apps. You get the Premiere Pro, you get Photoshop, you, you get Illustrator, Lightroom, Oh, you name it, you get loads. Dreamweaver, I mean, I don't even use any of them. The only ones that I use is Premiere Pro and Photoshop. And let me tell you guys, at £50 a month, if you're making money on YouTube, especially if you're trying to make this your living, guys, that is worth every single penny. I know a lot of people, they download a private version and they run it for free and don't want to pay them any money, which, well, it's probably not really fair, really. I mean, if we're making money using their software, it's only fair that we pay these guys their, their fair share. Because without them guys, we wouldn't make any YouTube videos and the whole lot wouldn't be here. So I, I, I happily pay the £50 a month so I can use their, their software. And also it keeps it updated to the latest version. If there's any problems, you can get in contact with them. Everything works perfectly. If you've got the, the private version, then something goes wrong, you're on your own. And well, I don't know. Use what you want to use guys. I mean, just do whatever makes you happy. So alright guys, hope you like that video. If there's anything that you want to see in any more detail, let me know in the comments. I mean, I could do this whole video again if it's popular and I'll spend a bit more time and I'll do some nice little smooth pans and I'll use some better lighting and I'll go into some more depth. If you want that, guys, let me know. Otherwise, the whole main point of this video was just because I've got so many questions. What camera do you use? What do you edit on? What's, what computer do you use? All that stuff. I thought I'd just quickly chuck a video out there that shows you all the gear that I use and hopefully that's done that. So, all right, guys, hope you like the video. Subscribe, bell buttons, all, all that mumble jumble. See you soon.